Bonaduke Cooper Dup. What is it? Benafor Clumpanonk. It is Bendy funny. Snatch Cucumber. <laughs> So anyone who owns a white Fiat would be too embarrassed to show their damn face in public, <laughs> let me tell you. Stupid car. Wake up! The connections! <laughs> There's just like a man in a fucking fluorescent vest in my front yard. God. Hey, welcome back to Girl Historians. I'm Carly. I'm Blair. And this is the comedy podcast where we talk about history and are also girls. And lately we've been doing Princess Diana and it's been a freaking riot. Honestly, the true girl history icon. Girl icon, some might say. Girl icon, people's princess, girl's princess, et cetera, et cetera. We know this. We love this. And if you're just jumping in on the Diana series, this is a great episode because today we're doing conspiracy theories. Oh, yes. We're going to talk about the death of Princess Diana and then the conspiracy theories because literally all of the ones that we're covering there's three of them um deal with in some way her death okay that's what they are i'm sure there's others but honestly when you look up princess diana conspiracy theory it's literally just like the queen killed her like you cannot find anything else i have found two others Mm -hmm. um, but they all deal with her death in one way or another and they're very interesting i'm i'm intrigued i am i sometimes think that conspiracy theories about people's death um deaths are 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 in poor taste yeah and these aren't not no but they do as far as a poor taste conspiracy theory go do try to respect the victim in the sense that everyone's like we love her and she was killed (laughs) you know it's i think much worse for the victim's families because imagine somebody you love dies yes and then everyone in the world is like well you know your grandma's still you know your grandma's still alive and she killed you so yeah your grandma's still alive like imagine your grandma's dead yeah and then everyone's like well your grandma's still alive don't you know this your grandma's alive in canada and you're like, what? What? What the fuck? What? So we're going to get into that today. Um, we're going to talk about the timeline of her death that night. So we have all the information. I'm going to talk about the three major conspiracy theories and a couple of other things that are unsavory, just kind of sus mm-hmm. about the whole night. I'm what excited. What I am going to say is I want to say that literally all of this is unfounded because every once in a while we get a new listener to the pod and nothing but love and light. They're like, it's a, that, that, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, girl, it's not, it's a history podcast for girls and not historians who are girls. Like mm-hmm. it's for the girls that just want a little, a little bit of knowledge. A little bit of knowledge. Also we do like, this is kind of like all, conspiracy theories in general have to be taken with a grain of salt. Absolutely. I think it's always really obvious when you have a conspiracy theory that's like really, really obviously true you know what i mean like mm-hmm. every once in a while a conspiracy theory will pop up and it'll be like well that just like happened, happened. that yes. happened that's yeah. true yeah so i do want to say with all these like when we are doing research on actual parts of people's lives those are heavily researched and i really and you do as well try to validate the information yeah. for conspiracy theories i'm like let's have a laugh let's have you a know laugh what i mean let's have a silly for time all intents and purposes we will accept the story that has been told to us it was a tragic accident yeah and in due in part the reason she died because they were so close to the hospital was because the press um was there horrible and, 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 and basically they were swarming her they were taking de- pictures of her dead body or she wasn't dead at the scene of the crime but still taking pictures of her really really like bloodied body blocking the ambulance things like that that is yeah. the story that is as far as we can say the truth yeah no absolutely but i'm excited to get into yeah. it how's your week been carly um it's been good it's been busy Yes. I went to a cottage last week. I'm doing a shoot in Atlanta this weekend for Which a music so video. Exciting. I'm excited. I'm really nervous. There's a lot of lines. <laughs> a lot of lines for a music video? Yes. I thought I I'd have just like, be dancing. I know. I was oh. thinking I might be acting silently. There's mm-hmm. a monologue. I'm There's cons- a monologue? I'm concerned about it. What's happening? It's a good script. It's just... I don't ever feel as though I'm the best dramatic actor in the mm. world. Oh, it's drama. 
Yeah, it's like I about can't depression. Wait <laughs> to see this. We're gonna do a live reaction on the podcast. Yeah, we'll do it on the Patreon. It's about depression. Okay, so great for you because you're so depressed. Well, that's actually I was like I, I kind of thought about it yesterday when, when I was learning the lines. I was like I can literally just be myself. Like I could yeah. just say these just lines miserable. as I feel them, mm-hmm. and then that's acting. It is. Yeah. I think that is literally acting. Yeah. So I've just been running, running, running around. The cottage last week was good. I'm very bad at co-living with people. Um, I get upset about cleaning. It's not a cute look. Well, cottages are kind of a nightmare, too, because, like, if you're not in Canada, I feel like it might be probably in the States, too. But, like, Canada has this, like, really intense kind of cottage culture. It's strange. And it's kind of like, I feel like sometimes when you talk about it to someone not from Canada, they're sort of confused. But it's basically like going to a vacation house. But the way often you do it is either, like, a friend will have a family cottage or you rent a cottage on you get, Airbnb. You get, like, eight people to go in on a cottage. Yeah, and the whole point of going to the cottage is basically to, like, get drink, wasted. Yeah, get dr- drunk, 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 drunk. three to seven days. Buy a body of water. Buy a body of water and, like, bring, like, any were like between like three and 14 of your closest friends yeah and, and you just be wasted. like what if we were all roommates for a week yeah and reese god love him is such a he does not care about equity in the way that i do mm. so he'll just clean up and mm-hmm. he allows himself to get taken advantage of yes. in a way that i do not think is fair no um and again i understand and let me just say because there are some people who listen to the podcast who um went to the cottage with me if you're listening to the podcast (laughs) it's not you do you know what i mean like i have a couple people in mind and they're not ones that listen to the podcast okay i can't wait to find out off mic off mic just like this idea of like we're okay dinner's done and i always lived in a household i believe this to my core unless you are co-cooking dinner whoever cooks does not clean that's always that's what i thought was like obvious like innate human knowledge exactly you cook you don't have to clean yeah like i remember having to explain that to someone the first time and i was like i don't know like insane like was your mother like actually being abused like, like you, what, ha- what yeah, no, was this going is what on? i'm saying like that's not what we do no and you know what you can say a lot of things but my mom she would cook dinner and be like get in the kitchen get in the kitchen and clean <laughs> i am not wiping down that pan and and yeah. correct so like mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just so confusing to me. And like, so when, you know, dinner's done, the two people who like usually do help with the cleaning is cook dinner. So I'm like, okay, up I go to help clean. And then to have people just like be on their phone. It's like, what are you doing? I almost lost it. Like, well, it makes you wonder how people like live in their own homes. Which is like, but it's we're also like adults. always the people that talk about how strict their parents were growing up that have the fucking, war- I'm like, well, they weren't, didn't take oh no every once in a while you'll meet someone and it's like oh so your parents did absolutely everything for you yeah. and it's now showing as an adult in a crazy yeah, way yeah and it, again it's like not like a personality flaw because i do just understand that it's like different um like standards mm-hmm. but it's very strange to me and i find that stuff very yeah. hard i obviously have like you know when you have like the thing of like the stories you tell yourself about yourself and about life like inform basically all of your mental illness or yes, whatever for sure and i think a big like theme for me is I find that people act disrespectful. Like Mm -hmm. I get very mad when I feel like people don't respect me because I'm a small woman. So no one respects me. Like Mm, you've done business with me. We're a bit, we're business partners. We're business partners now. Carly's sister introduced me to her friend as a A business, as a business partner, which I honestly boggled my mind for a couple of days. That is like, Oh my God. That is an insane, (laughs) that is an insane way to introduce you. We can agree on that. But like whenever we're doing that, I'll get mad whenever somebody tries to like big dog us or be like well listen like we'll say something like hey this is what i need and they'll be yeah. like no and i'll be like well i'm asking you to do it yes so that's a big problem in my life and i think the cleaning is another aspect of that of being like you think you're better and above this even though that's not an actuality no what's going through their mind right no, no. so it's fine um i had a lot of fun there was a pool i got really tan that's fun i just laid by the pool we that played Trivial great. Pursuit. It was a good I time. I love Trivial Pursuit. It um, got to be one of the best games. Just a great game. Now I'm back and basically, yeah, like back two to three days off, but of like doing other like YouTube work. 
That's great. Going on the social tomorrow and then Huge. flying to Atlanta. You're such a regular on the social now. I know. I'm the Gen Z correspondent. <laughs> You're the Gen Z correspondent. I know. I gotta, I, I'm going to the mall after this with my mom to have lunch. It's a whole thing. You don't want to know the details. <laughs> Carly's mom wants to go to a cafe that, that no doesn't exist. exist. She was like, let's go to this cafe at the mall <laughs> and eat there. And I'm like, well, that cafe closed. And she's like, no, it didn't. And I'm like, I'm telling you it's closed. Did I ever tell you about when my mom didn't know that Liberty Village existed? That's actually beautiful. It was honestly really funny. So there's a, an area that's super gentrified in Toronto called Liberty Village. And but they built it up like, maybe 20 years ago. Yeah. It, like you can't even necessarily even say it was gentrified because it feels like they put, They just built it. They built it from the ground it up. Like it used to, to be, be warehouses. And people go there and have like warehouse raves and yeah. stuff like that. Like it was just kind of like this seedy industrial area. And they mowed it down, built condo buildings. Yeah. And it's all like young professionals. It's really, really kind of like weird to go there because you walk in and everybody's in athleisure. Everybody's the same yes. age. Everybody's in the same tax bracket They've all got tiny little dogs yeah and it's always i feel really you can always tell when something's off in toronto specifically mm -hmm. because there's no old people yes specifically a lot and of no old kids asian people because yes. they're you know living in their city and they get out and about is what i mean you they know get what I mean? out and about and they are the watchers of the city this is I what i'm like this. they're um, around yes. in a way that like they are truly integral to like this toronto sidewalk mm -hmm. ballet like when you think about the infrastructure of like the people in a city and the city of Toronto. That's what you think of. Cause yeah. they're like engaged in the community in quite a way. Yes. Um, and also homeless people. Like yes. if there's no homeless people, um, it's like what happened? Something like, it's not like, Oh, they're not here. It's like, Oh, they've been moved. Yeah. They've been moved. They've been shipped And that's Liberty away. Village where you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. And Liberty Village is very, it's very much like a landing pad. Like if you're like a young yeah. professional whose dream is to live in a cute little suburb and you're moving from somewhere as well. Yeah. Right. You're, like, you're sort of like, I want to experience the city for a couple of years. Yes. You'll live in Liberty Village for like three to five years and, and then, then move you to like, port credit. Yeah. And then you buy a million dollar home, whatever. But, um, my mom, one time I was talking about, I can't remember. I was talking about like getting like a warehouse or something i was like i'm looking for like a warehouse to rent for an event or something she was like well what about what about at the king uh corner of like king and dufferin and i was like what do you mean and she was like well there's that whole area that's just like warehouses and i was like you mean liberty village it's this a woman, neighborhood now. Yeah, this woman has lived in Toronto her that entire life. That is so life, beautiful, and though. I was just like, that's I want actually, to live in your brain. No, that's the version of Toronto that I want to live I in. I know. I'm. She's so impressive the way she just refuses to know things. Yes, I think that's actually a very beautiful it's thing. It's really beautiful. But you're going to the mall to get an outfit for the social. Is that well, the... No, I have an outfit, no. but the outfit is backless. And usually when I wear it, I just don't wear a bra. But I don't think the social is going to have that on the titty social. out. So I'm going to see if I can get a sticky bra. Oh, a sticky bra. But I just like don't ever wear bras, right? So it's like... Good for you. And thank and thank you. Thank Good for you. you. But I can't on television. No. I'm trying not to buy new outfits for the social all the time because yeah. it feels like that will be bad if they have me on every like month or so. And then I just <laughs> like, have 12 new outfits that yeah. I don't wear otherwise. Done. Yeah. So I'm gonna rewear that like little black and black skirt and like black top, but they have like food on them. Oh, cute. Yeah. Okay. Love. It's cute. Um, so I think that's what I'll wear, but I need a sticky bra, a sticky some, bra. So, some so sort, but they're yeah, busy, but like, okay. I was definitely in a funk my birthday. Birthdays um, are funk Which I don't times. think we even talked about on the podcast. Like I think no. the last time we recorded, I was 24 and now I'm 25. Oh, 25. Oh, yeah. We're going to be and alive. now we're firmly in Leo season. Cancer season Thank is God. over. I love cancer season, but I am in my feels in cancer season. Yes. Um, but I was in my feels around my birthday, even though I didn't feel like I was, but I was feeling it and I knew it must be due mm -hmm. to my birthday. And I'm feeling a bit better with every like step I take in space I give myself. Yes. So I'm, I'm doing lovely. okay. What about you? That's nice. I'm good. I'm kind of like, I haven't been in a funk, but I just feel like I've been getting this big feeling of like time passing by in a really kind of like fast, uncontrollable way. Totally. Which has been a little stressful. Yeah. I just feel like it's kind of like what we were touching on before, but just like I'm feeling more in my life right now. Like I'm running my life like a business. Yeah. And I think it's like just becoming kind of more, it's what? it's hard it's one of those things where like you finally start to get what you want and for things to work out for you and you're like oh this is actually so stressful yeah and I think we've talked about it on the pod before where it's like one of those things you're so grateful for but then you're like oh my god now I have to make decisions about things that I never even thought of before and all of a sudden you're like learn what to do about this because one bad choice could fuck you over for years I was talking with Reese about this because I was talking with um and I feel like I can say this on the podcast because it's not confirmed whatever not like confirmed but talking with a like a touring company about doing the like twilight shows on like a tour oh yeah fun. which could be fun 
but they were like, oh, you can, f- and you can decide how many shows you want to do if you want to have like a break. Like if you want to do like three weeks of shows and then a break and then three weeks of shows. And I was like, this is the problem with getting success later in your life. And it's not like I'm like, oh my God, so much later. Yeah. But by the time I'm 25, I have adjusted to a level of comfort that if I was 19, I'd be like, I will sleep on a mattress <laughs> in the theater. Yeah. I do not care. And yeah. now I'm like, three weeks of shows in a row jesus i'll do like very lucky but you know what i mean like that is a thing where like yes when you build a regular life because Mm -hmm. you don't have like a huge break yes when you get these big opportunities i'm like i've like uh, been accustomed to not working yes and i was like (laughs) you're asking me to work (laughs) do you understand that you're asking me to work yeah no, it, it feels crazy. So like having to run your life like a business and make all those decisions, if this were to happen when you were like 19, you'd be like, well, of course. You'd be like, amazing. I'm destined Perfect. for fame let's, in my life is a business. It. Perfect. But then you've actually had the, it is a privilege because like child stars get so fucked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to build your life as a human, not mm-hmm. as like a product, not as a business, which is a privilege. Yes. Although when I was 19, I was like, doesn't feel like it. <laughs> it feels like this sucks and not what I want. But then when you have to do that after you've built a life as a human, it feels kind of weird. Yeah. It's all like, I, I'm just like learning more and more that like life is just a lot of like constant readjusting and figuring out what works and what isn't working. Which is strange. And it's, it's cool. I, like, I guess that's life and it's what you kind of choose in a way. And I don't know if anyone really really escapes that kind of rat race well no because we do live in capitalism so yeah, like exactly what are you gonna do but i'm really excited for the fall in a way i just feel like summer for me always feels like i've, I've said this for years but i always i feel like the new year is september yes where it's just like i feel like january to august you're kind of finishing off the year like january to march is work time yeah and then april to august it's like the wind down period you know Mm -hmm. what i mean like it's like you're finishing things up and then september it's like you're going back to school yeah i also think for us like if you have if you work in a more creative field your schedule is very different than other people like my december is always fucked yeah my december always ruins my life i always think it'll be chill and And it's never chill nightmare i get hit by a train yeah because people come with their families to see shows yes. so if you're doing comedy shows in december you will be booked up your ass mm-hmm. so stuff like that like our schedules are just like maybe a little different than like a traditional nine to five which is again love and light but i think everybody's schedules are so different and like times of the year that is busy for them that it's funny that like we've created a norm of time you know what i mean yes because like for my mom teacher like summer is summer and the new year is September. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like it's so different for different people. But if you're doing like business quarters because you're a business person, then January is the new, you know what I mean? Yes. Like it's so strange that we have to just like live with the Gregorian calendar or whatever. Is it Gregorian? Yeah. Right? Yes. Maybe. The Gregorian um, It's a calendar. history podcast. Should know. Should know. But um, like we all have to live under this one, I don't know, oppressive time system when yeah, it doesn't work stupid calendar i know have i talked about going to newfoundland yet on the podcast i don't think so because i think we haven't recorded until you've you, yeah we you, took a week we took a week off because i went to newfoundland then you went to the cottage yeah and we were just like we need to also sort out some some things and take a little breather but i went yeah, to newfoundland not it was for our relationship it makes it seem like we had a big fight no just business stuff don't know we about actually it. haven't i don't think had a real fight well we had the smarties fight we had the smarties <laughs> fight that was the biggest fight <laughs> yeah smarties versus m M&M. I just find you quite easy to talk to if I'm being honest. Well, yeah, I think we also, (laughs) we have a very compatible style of just like, we just don't care enough. Like, and the things that we do care about, we understand how much the other person cares about it and treat it with like, um, with with like kitty gloves where it's like, when we're doing Smarties versus m ms I'm like, well, I don't care enough to fight this. You know what I mean? Where some people just love the yeah. fight. And then when it is something more high stress, I'm like, well, I understand that this actually does have stake. Yes. So let's like be kind. And you know what else I was thinking about was that like we don't really go out and just get like crazy drunk that's together gotta, very That's got to be a part and of I, it. Because I'm I was I, Well, I love back. to go home. You love to go home. <laughs> Must be I said. love to stay out and drink. But yeah. I don't really, I'm not really, you don't get really, really, really messy no. anymore. I used to be really, really messy when I was younger. I can see that. And I can still get super messy. I'm not, let's, let's not pretend I'm Yeah, it's just the, the sword is in the sheath. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I think that has a lot to do with it because I feel like I just used to get like wasted drunk yes, randomly I think that's on a true. Thursday and then just like scrap. Yeah. With like whoever was nearby. I think that's true. And if you're hungover a lot, you're also cranky. Oh yeah. I hate being hungover now. It's actually a nightmare. Yeah. I think that's true. Like 
I love I love to leave. I can't anymore. It makes me you feel do love to I do leave. have problems. I feel like I should honestly, even though I'm not like <laughs> so sober, like read a book about socializing as sober because I don't dry I don't get drunk. Yeah. Um and I find it sometimes really hard. Like I feel like disconnected sometimes from mm-hmm. people. Cause when everybody's fucking drunk and you're not and you're like, you're like, well, I would like to go then. Like, it's like nothing against people that are getting drunk. Cause like live your fucking truth. But I'm yeah. like, well, I'm not having fun. Yeah. It's not fun for me when everyone's just when everyone's screaming. So and I get wasted. that it's fun for you guys. Cause you are wasted and I've been there, but I just like, yeah. don't really drink anymore. Cause it uh, fucks up my body and makes me so depressed and it's oh, just not worth it. Absolutely. Well, I found a similar experience when I quit weed. Yeah. All of a sudden, a lot of my social life took this kind of weird hit yeah, because I used to do everything stoned and like my free nights would be getting super high when I couldn't do that anymore. I was like, oh, what am I, I going to do? Yeah, I now have either sober socialization or I'm getting drunk. Yeah. So tell me about Newfoundland. I mean, I've heard a bit. Newfoundland I heard was you got an, an, beautiful. Nothing but love and light. You got they them in, in Newfoundland. I got they them in Newfoundland <laughs> and it was iconic. Yeah. And um, oh, and if nothing you're listening wrong, to this. Like, again, I, I love it. But there is a specific feeling if you are cis when you get, but you you oh, present very like yes. androgynous when you do get they them. You're like, okay, accepting environment, safe space. I love it. But I am putting out a vibe right now. Well, this is the thing. Like, I get aggressively she heard, and I am a she her. I've always been very, always been a she. I've always been a she her. I don't. I just feel very comfortable in my gender, and I realize there's That's like nice. a, a privilege in that. That totally. I'm like, there's lots of times I want to be a man, but I've never been like I want to be a man for respect. I've never wanted to be anything but like a woman and a girl. Yeah, and I feel very privileged in that. And when someone does like they them me, I'm like that is so nice yeah it was really kind but yeah there is like such a kindness in it in terms of like being very like accepting do you know what i mean of like of like being like well and like you know what what how do you identify like because they them does base can also encapsulate like if you do identify as she her and somebody they thems you you don't experience i don't think like gender dysphoria in the same way if you are whereas if you're not binary and people call you by like cis terminology you yes. feel a lot more dysphoria For i would sure. assume again i'm not um trans but i but, feel like that's true from right? what i've heard from my trans friends exactly um when they're not talking shit when they're not <laughs> absolutely gossiping yeah <laughs> and you know trans people love to gossip they, honestly trans people are the keepers of secrets it's true though i feel like i learn a lot of secrets yeah from my trans friends exactly they're just they're sitting on information they're you watchers you wouldn't even believe they're watchers they're the watchers on the wall they're the watchers on the motherfucking wall <laughs> But yeah, Newfoundland was amazing. Um, I saw my friend Mallory was in a play called uh, No Change in the Weather. Love. Which is honestly kind of a crazy musical that I don't really fully understand. It was about, I, I can't even describe the plot because I'll get it wrong. That's fine. But Google it, was, it. It was neat and she did a great job. And then um, I went to like Cape Spear and Signal Hill and stuff. I like, love the East Coast. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Like, it's so <laughs> nice. I was the really sea like, air. Oh my god, it's so freaking it's a nice. Bummer, it's, it's beautiful. sliding into the ocean. It's not. I will not believe it's sliding into the ocean. <laughs> climate change denier. I'm now a climate change denier because I need Newfoundland to say I really want to go back. I really want to like. I would love to like do a project there or something. Hell yeah, me too. She, I would love yeah. to book 22 minutes. Yes. Literally same. And like they're they not interested Hudson. in me. <laughs> no. Let's say it. They hey, do not want to hire me. Maybe one day. Yeah, maybe when I'm 50. <laughs> maybe when you're 50. If the show still exists. Yeah. I mean, probably. Yeah. Probably. But um, yeah, she uh she went out there to film Hudson and Rex. She was on a couple of episodes of Hudson and Rex. And um I'm like now. That's I'm a dog like, human I, cop show. Yeah, it's where if the dog and the Canada, human are cops. They're and cops and they solve mysteries. They're yeah, that's all I know. I it's don't kind know of like much about Sherlock that, Holmes of Sherlock and Watson, one was a man and one was a if dog, Watson and was they were a both dog. cops. And they were both cops. It's basically just like Sherlock with Benedict Cumbersmatch. <laughs> <laughs> that joke will never get old to me. Bonaduke Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? Benafor Klompenonk. <laughs> I will never, that will never not be funny to me. The way I've been harping on that joke for 13 years. <laughs> I know, it's such an old joke. <laughs> but it's so good. It is Bendy funny. Snatch Cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never get over it. But yeah, Nifilod was beautiful. Yeah. Bernard 
club clubbing spiel. I know. I'd love to go out there. I'd, I'd love to live there for a bit. I know. Come back and forth. I feel like I'd, I could really find myself there. If anyone listening is on Son of a Critch. I'd love a recurring part, bro. <laughs> me fucking too. I want. I told you anyone? my favorite story of all time. So Son of a Critch. If you're not in Canada, it's basically a sitcom. It's like our version of Young Sheldon. I would say yes, but not as popular. And I would argue also as well. Nothing but love and light to the writers of Son of a Critch. Not as funny. Not is that, is not, Young Sheldon funny? Apparently, Young Sheldon is is better than you'd think it would be. This is uh, I've heard this too. The people are like, it's actually funny if you watch it. I haven't watched it though, so I don't want to stand by that. But no. I've had people in secrecy be like, it's actually pretty it's funny. It's actually pretty good. Um, <laughs> and I have seen Son of a Critch, and I can say it's not that good. Oh. Unless I'm on it, then I love that show. It's and actually I really but good. Love that show. But basically, it's like all of our funding goes into that show, and it's about this canadian comedian mark critch but he's a child in the show son of a critch right that's what the show is about yeah he's a child we right? i and like malcolm, how we recommend these shows no i'm not recommending uh, son nothing of a critch. nothing i'm not recommending lives. and malcolm, like hudson and rex malcolm mcdowell is his father which is crazy which is insane that they got malcolm mcdowell for that he's not canadian no and he was in a clockwork orange and he's in six he was in like gossip girl was he in gossip girl yeah probably crazy to get the guy from a clockwork orange anyways is crazy. i was watching basketball like a basketball like game with a bunch of comedians crazy and um, a crazy thing to do i'll i was com- comedian mark little was there he was saying like i watched son of a critch and it's so fucking bad i watched the first three episodes it's literally horrible and then the girl next to me went i write on son of a critch <laughs> No. It was awesome, <laughs> and he was like, "No, no, I mean, probably your episodes were good. Probably your episodes were pretty, pretty, pretty good." It was beautiful. Just doing damage control. I laughed so hard because also the way she said it, I was like, "That is so funny. That is so funny this to be like, I write on Son of a Critch. I write on Son of a Critch. It's interesting how you hate me and want me dead. My work is bad. Yeah, say it again louder oh, for the back. Okay. Oh, you think it's bad? You think I'm bad? Oh. Yeah. Should we talk about Diana now? Yeah, let's get into freaking Diana. Princess. Okay. Um, Princess. First, we're gonna we're gonna take a little break, and then we're gonna be back with Diana, and it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna you're gonna lose your fucking minds. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through um, Diana's death timeline. Okay. Okay. So in July of 1997, Diana is linked to Egyptian filmmaker Dodi Fayed. Okay. okay. Um, Amazing name. I know. I know. Dodi his Fayed. father's last name is Al Fayed. And Ugh, cool. I don't know if his, it's also Al Fayed, Dodi Al Fayed. I don't know. Well, doesn't When you look it up, it says Dodi Fayed. Let me look Dodi this up. Dodi Fayed? I don't want to. Well, because doesn't Al Fayed wanna... mean like son of? I think so. I don't want to disrespect no, iconic Egyptian filmmaker. Somebody who's Egyptian is like, oh my God, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I might be wrong about that. Dodi no, Fayed. his name is, he, I mean, he goes by Dodi Fayed. And his father's name is, yeah, Muhammad Al Fayed. Okay. Amazing. I was right. Never mind. Crushed Sometimes it. Sometimes you don't need to think about the what makes sense to you as a Western person in terms of different names. Just accept yeah. it and move on. Just That's a note to myself. On. Yeah. So they spend time together <laughs> on Fayed's father's yacht in the south of France. This is in July. August 30th of the same year, Diana and Dodi fly to Paris. Okay? Huge. They go to Fayed's apartment. Dodi goes to a jewelry store. Diana gets her hair done. And Henry Paul, Fayed's chauffeur, goes to a bar and drinks alone on August 30th. Okay. He's a chauffeur. An and alcoholic. He's, and he's drinking. But he's drinking while he's supposed to be driving. Okay. That's that will a, come so back he's in drinking later. and driving. Yes. That's too bad. Yes. He shouldn't do that. Well, I'm sure it'll turn out fine. <laughs> I'm sure it'll all be good and no no repercussions. Exactly. Yeah. On at 8 51 p.m., the couple leaves the apartment and is followed by photographers. Because of the photographers, Fayed instructs Paul to drive to the Ritz. Okay. So they okay. go get her, their hair done, whatever, return to the apartment. 8 51, they go to the Ritz for dinner. Okay. Yes. Photographers trailing them. Okay. Gorgeous. At 9.50, the couple goes to one of the hotel's restaurants. At 10.08, Paul gets a drink at the hotel bar and takes two prescription pills. Oh, no. He is, this is witnessed by hotel staff, maitre d', bartenders, that kind oh, of thing. Oh, no. One for depression and one is for alcoholism. Oh, there's a pill for alcoholism? Well, it's not fucking working. Yeah. He's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine there is some kind of pill now that you can take to help with um, withdrawals. 
Oh yeah. This is a, this is 1997. It feels like we're not there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he leaves the bar, walks into another patron, like smack into them, like is drunk. Okay. okay. I've done this. Yes. A lot of other, because when you get to the conspiracy theory part of it, people are like, he didn't seem that drunk. Like maybe these, like he, he didn't seem that drunk. And some of the reports, he is quite drunk. And other people are like, he didn't seem that drunk in CCTV footage. And to that, I say he's an alcoholic. And he's drinking in Paris. He's an alcoholic. Like we've all, I'm just going to say we've all been around alcoholics. Maybe you've had a, a better life than I. <laughs> maybe you've had a better life without alcoholics. But you can seem normal. Yes. More no, normal you, than a regular person. Drinking. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So that was at 10.08. From 10.30 to 12 a.m., Paul talks to photographers three different times outside of the hotel. So Diana and Dodie are inside the hotel eating. Paul's at the hotel bar, has a drink. Between this time, while Diana and Dodie are still eating, he goes out three different times and talks to the photographers drunk. Okay? That's kind of iconic. He tells them Diana will be leaving the hotel at one point, being like, just chill out. Diana's leaving soon. Yeah. A couple eats dinner, heads back to Fayed's apartment. Okay? Okay. So they've left the hotel. At 12. At 12. They 12. leave the hotel. Paul is or at still- at 12.20 a.m., the couple goes to leave the hotel. And okay. Paul is driving. Okay? Okay. Diana's bodyguard, Trevor Reese Jones, is in the passenger seat. So driving, Henry Paul, passenger seat, Trevor Reese Jones. Mm-hmm. Diana and her bodyguard are incredibly close. Okay. I love then that. Then in the back seat is Jody and Diana. They're not wearing their seatbelts. This is another strange thing about the night. Diana was a staunch seatbelt wearer, was not wearing the seatbelt that night. That's really interesting. Um, which a lot of people, and this is a weird, like there's a lot of weird anti-seatbelt propaganda. <laughs> Do you notice this? <laughs> yeah. Like it's the same thing as how everybody's like anti-sunscreen now. And I'm like, you guys are going to get melanoma. So yeah, have fun with that. what's up with the anti-sunscreen People thing? are like sunscreen, but until sunscreen existed, melanoma didn't exist. And I was like, it did. It did. We just didn't, didn't have, have the technology to it. diagnose it. People just it's died. almost as if we invented something to fix the thing that we discovered. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about it. Now. Yeah, it's being like I don't, I don't even know. Like being uh, like until shovels yeah. were invented, holes didn't exist. And it's like, well, do you think that well, maybe that's you, related? Yeah, like what are you talking about? What are you talking about? So like a lot of people are like, the fact of the matter, car crash experts have said if she was wearing her seatbelt, it would have been better. That yes, which is what, as you know from facts of life, is true. Yes, there is a misconception that her neck was sliced because she was wearing a seatbelt when we were at that wedding together ben sosa white ben sosa right friend of the pod was like oh she got her neck sliced by a seatbelt and i was yeah. like no girl that no it didn't, didn't, happen. didn't happen um oh and i wonder God. if it's some weird like libertarian lobbying thing that seatbelts are bad being like she died because she was wearing her seatbelt yeah, when she... in actuality she wasn't wearing her seatbelt what is up uh, being anti-seatbelt is, is strange really in the strange. year of our lord in the year of our lord yes strange um, so Diana and Dodie are in the back. As they're driving away at 12, 20 a.m., Paul calls out to the photographers, don't try to follow, you will never catch us. <laughs> he's kind of, unfortunately, he's, he's driving drunk. So I don't want to call him iconic. But he's being a bit iconic a right now. A little iconic. What's happening? <laughs> Did you see that? Okay, he's gone. <laughs> There's just like a man in a fucking fluorescent vest in my front yard. That's really, and he walked kind of into oblivion. It was a ghost. Well, okay, cool. Who Glad is that's he? Happening. Who window? is he? Calling 12, out to you. 12.23 a.m. And this is in French, and I'm very bad at French, so bear with me. At the Pont de la Alma Tunnel. Pont de la Alma. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're the black welcome. Mercedes is going 85 miles per hour and clips another car at the tunnel entrance. How many is that in kilometers? Do you want me to look it up? No. So no. Everybody do it in their head. Guess. Wait, it, how many miles an hour? 85. 85? Because 55 is the speed limit in America because it goes, I can't drive 55. But it's, yeah, sometimes it's a bit higher, but yeah. 85 miles okay, per okay, hour. Okay, going 136 kilometers per so that's hour. That's really fast. <laughs> so that's quite fast. He's going, so he's driving highway speeds. <laughs> let's ride. Let's ride. Lamborghini. Lamborghini. Obviously, it's sad that Diana died. Mm-hmm. She would have loved Brat. Diana she is She would have loved Brat. What do you... Th- I think she would have liked Girl So Confusing with Lord. Yes. Her I and Camilla. Think, oh Camilla, let's God. work it out on the remix. Oh, my God. Let's work it out on the remix. Someone who's good at... At, at AI. Things, at AI. <laughs> can you please that. make Diana, Camilla... Girl, let's so, work it out on the remix. Girl So Confusing. Yes. Somebody do that. Um oh, say let's go out. Okay. The... Yeah, so it's a um, so they crash into a pillar going 136 kilometers per hour, 85 miles per hour. <laughs> That's so fast. I know it's crazy fast. 
Oh no! He's drunk. <laughs> yeah. He was drinking all day alone at the bar. He's going. Then Let's drank ride. more. He drank more at the hotel and took two pills. Yeah, no, it's I don't not... know if he drank on antidepressants. Oh uh, no, it's not good. It's fucked. That was my whole university. No one told me not to drink on SSRIs. So feels I was like getting they hammered to- four days a week while on a very high dose that of feels, antidepressants. Yeah. So that feels bad. Yeah, no, it wasn't good. So. They clip a car at the tunnel entrance and crash into a pillar. Okay, I'm going to say this, and it's not funny at all. But It's not funny. Rest in peace, Diana. But to drink all day, get hammered, go outside the hotel, beef the paparazzi, <laughs> then get into a car. And with Princess with Diana. Princess Diana. And her lover. It. And just floor it through Paris is an objectively hilarious thing. to. That's like something. As a chauffeur, dude. I've been playing The Sims, right? And that's like whatever Sims something would, I would do if I were like, I'm, I'm going to kill my, my Sims. Sims. Do something crazy. Yeah, it's insane. And again, he's going fast to outrun the paparazzi. But to that I say, slow. Slow down. Slow down. What are they going to do? And Have I'm, you ever been in an Uber where they're flooring it and you're like, oh, I'm about to die. Oh, my God. Remember absolutely. I took an Uber to the airport once and it was like one of those things where like the flight's at 8 a.m. So you're like on the Don Valley Expressway <laughs> like at 4 a.m. Oh, and it's, and it's, an it's an just nightmare. your Uber driver in the open road. Oh, and he God. puts pedal to the metal and you're like, I'm going to die in an it's Uber. It's kind of beautiful. Oh, my God. I took the slowest Uber of my life in Newfoundland. He was going 50 miles an hour down a freaking highway. We were getting <laughs> past like crazy. It was actually <laughs> nuts i was like he was going walking speed <laughs> it was so- crazy it was the slowest uber ever and we were all in the car and none of us were talking because like we were just sort of like I what think is all happening thinking, like what's what is happening what is here? happening what is happening yeah it okay. was crazy so they hit the pole so they hit the pole fayed and paul are killed instantly oh my god i know jesus reese jones and diana are seriously injured photographer oh no. ramald rat arrives within seconds and is the first on the scene and he snaps photos Nothing but wish, wish you nothing but the worst. Okay. Ab- so go to hell. Is, no, objectively a psycho thing to do. That is insane. Actually, I don't even want to say psycho because that is disrespectful to people to, who to are in psychosis. psychosis. No. Because nobody in psychosis would do that. That is objectively unhinged. No, he's an evil, evil man. Put the camera down. Okay. Disgusting. Dr. Frederick Melier, who was driving on the opposite side of the Melier. tunnel, saws, saws the wrecked car, by the way, sees the wrecked <laughs> car and attempts to help those inside. Oh my God. Okay, this good is for like him. Loving a doctor. Yes. Like if somebody like die- was dying in a restaurant and you're a doctor and you can be mm-hmm. like, I'm going to help. Uh, That's why I couldn't be a doctor because I'd constantly just be like, I'm Offering helping. Up your help. Yeah. I'm like, does anyone want me to cut them open? You guys want to trade what's going on? Do you guys I can want cut them. I can rewire your lungs. It's kind of crazy. To mm-hmm. just be like, well, we're driving and like we see a car crash, like we have to stop and help. Because I'd be like, if I saw that, I'd be like, well, I want to help, but like, what am I going to do? Isn't that also Vlog? like, am I wrong? <laughs> Your oath as a YouTuber that if you see a car I crash, have, you have I to, have you to have stop to get out and the vlog. The Hippocratic oath of YouTubers, I have to get out and, and well, vlog. Isn't there, okay, maybe I'm fully making this up, but isn't it part of like the Hippocratic yeah. oath that like you have to help someone? Yeah, but isn't that crazy? Yeah, but I believe it's the same way that like, isn't it like every if you are like an adult and you see a child being like abused you have to report it or you can be like yeah legally and it's liable. crazy that that's a legal thing because it's like yeah dude yeah report it maybe just report it yeah yeah so he's attempts to help those inside reese jones the bodyguard is injured and yelling diana was on her hands and knees in front of the seat that she was sitting on and he didn't recognize her when he saw her okay um EMTs applied 18 minutes of CPR on Diana. Oh my god. As she went into cardiac arrest on the scene, her heartbeat her heartbeat is stabilized and she's put into an ambulance and transported to a hospital 4 miles away. Okay. So this is all happening around 12:30. Mhm. She arrives at the hospital at 2 a.m. What? And the hospital is 11 minutes away. Why did it take so long? So this is the thing where people are like, it is partially paparazzi, partially if somebody goes into cardiac arrest and you restabilize them, you don't want to like you don't want to move them, them. Yeah. yeah. But also this attributes to like the conspiracy theories of like she was killed. Yeah, because that doesn't really make any sense. That's horrible. Really, what it is is it's like I don't want. It's not a comedy of errors. It's a perfect storm. Yeah, of like just everything that could possibly go bad has gone bad. And if mm-hmm. the paparazzi weren't there taking pictures of a dead fucking body, maybe yeah. the, maybe things would have gone better. <laughs> maybe it would have worked out. Yes. So the ambulance ambulance reaches the hospital almost two hours after the accident because photographers and crowds would not get out of the way. Diana is transported into surgery and pronounced dead at 4 a.m. Oh, my God. Very sad. That's horrible. On September 6, 1997, Diana's funeral happens. 
2,000 people attend the funeral and an estimated 2 billion people watch worldwide. Harry and William walked in the procession line, which is fucking crazy. Oh, that's so sad. It's nuts. They're like children at the time. Jesus. Prince Philip walks with them saying, if you walk, I walk. Obviously probably did some nasty bad stuff in his life. Yeah. But that's that that's is, a nice thing that for is him to king do. king consort behavior. Yeah. And Elton John... And Elton John sang a reworked version of Candle in the Wind in tribute to her, mm-hmm. which is iconic. Are you Goodbye, crying a bit? English Rose. <laughs> no, you were. Yeah, because it was originally about Marilyn Monroe. Yes. And he rewrote it for Diana. And now it's really about Diana in a big way. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's so sad. Yeah, it's really, really sad. It's just like, why did we let this happen? doesn't feel good. Oh, it's horrifying. Um, so that's her timeline of her death. And now we're getting into the conspiracy theories. So obviously the number one conspiracy we all know is about that the queen did yes. it. <laughs> is yeah, that, is that the queen killed her. It was some kind of combination of the crown killing Diana, Philip, Charles, yeah. the yeah. queen. And this is, I would say, as far as conspiracy theories go, pretty convincing and wildly, like widely accepted. Yes. Well, people will talk. Like even all talk about it and be like, "Well, the queen killed Diana." Yeah, like. like it's just too fucked and it's also if you think about like i feel like sometimes we forget how in recent history the like obviously we look at the english monarchy right now and it's like oh they're so corrupt blah 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 blah. but like a hundred years ago they were a thousand times more corrupt you know what i mean well they have to be on fucking good behavior now because they know that there's no fucking reason for them to be around yeah because they spent thousands of years at least one a single thousand years like just killing and and andrew was like with epstein and they were like well that's that's fine as long as he doesn't get caught well i guess he wasn't because he doesn't sweat he doesn't sweat so that wasn't him (laughs) and he was never on the second floor of that house i think yes on them exactly Mm -hmm. so people say that charles could not remarry unless she was dead this has been denied but makes sense for like the weirdness of like they married her to him when she was like a full child it squeaks Okay. It just squeaks. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) It makes a little frequency noise. Oh, okay. Nothing to be done about it. Me just shaking the microphone next to my ear and Carla while Carly's talking. (laughs) Um, Like, she got married to Charles because his bride needed to be, like, a virgin and in the Church of England or whatever. Like, it was still very much of that time where, like... I would believe that in some way they're like, well, you can't get remarried unless she's dead or something. That's what people say. It also um, would have been a but huge not confirmed. scandal. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, even if you are technically allowed to do it, like, I do think that the pushback of doing something like that within the royal family would have been absolutely brutal. And let's say this, because I think a lot of people are also like, and Camilla did it. And I want to say, again, I'm a Camilla defender, not in anything she's done that might be racist or bad, but in the <laughs> misogyny that she faces from royal fans and royalists, and even people in general, you're telling me after being humiliated in the press with your tampon freaky little sex call, yeah. you're not going to marry him? Yeah. You have to. No, you have to. You have to. Or Otherwise, your life like, is what is your, your life? life is That's ruined. so sad. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's insane. Yes. So, um, and also people say that Diana was pregnant. The royal family was concerned about having a baby of mixed race, like mm-hmm. in not like the royal line, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. tangentially related, like but a half know, brother to the future King of England. And they've proven that that's not true by how well they reacted to exactly, Meghan Markle. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Who did we, did we ever kind of figure out which person asked how black the baby was going to be? No, what? That was, I think, in the Oprah interview as they were talking about how it was a big concern in the royal family of how black Archie was going to be. Like, how Whoa. dark. Somebody asked, like, how dark the skin is going to be. Which, by the way, you don't know. Yeah, sorry. You can't be like, hey, Megan. It's not a prediction. Yeah, also, Megan is mixed. So not to say that, obviously, she faced a lot of racism, but, like, she's not hugely visibly black in the way that lots of dark-skinned women face, like, colorism. And she's yeah. still, they freaked out. Mm-hmm. But that was the whole thing where they were like, it wasn't the queen. It wasn't, um, and like, it wasn't the queen and it wasn't, um, William, but it was like somebody. It wasn't else. William? Yeah. Okay. So it's like Charles or it could be Camilla. I think a lot of people thought it might be Philip because he's so old. <laughs> Probably. Well, I mean, like, that's the kind of thing if Philip says it, it's almost a little bit better because it's just like, well, you're. He gonna, was 96. You're 96. And it's like, not you're, like it's you're okay. So at the end. But it's just so much worse if it's somebody who should know better. It would have been awful if it was William. Yeah, if it was you know William, I'd mean? be like, quite simply, shut up. Yeah, like, get live, a grip. live your life. If it's Philip, it's sort of like, okay, grandpa, go yeah. to bed. Yes, exactly. It's still bad <laughs> Sign across your the board. Will. But it's so rancid if it's someone younger. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because it's mean. like, what are you 
up to? Yes. So a lot of these conspiracy theories about the queen killing um, Dodie and Diana come from Dodie's father, who I'll refer to as Alphayette as his last name, just okay. so you don't get confused saying that Dodie, did, you know what I mean? Yes. Um, from his dad. Yeah. And this is very sad to me mm-hmm. because it's either one or the other thing. It's either not true. And he's been so traumatized by his son's death and heartbroken by his son's death. Yeah. That he's clung to this conspiracy theory in order to try and seek some kind of justice justice for a senseless event. Yes. Or it is true and he's painted as insane. Yes. That's rough. Isn't that crazy? That's really too bad. It's like that thing in like TV shows where the conspiracy theorist is like right, but everybody's been like, that guy's fucking that crazy. That crazy. And it's like, oh no, he was right the whole time. Yes. Yeah, so that's too he bad. was saying that Diana and Dodie were going to announce their engagement in the papers the following Monday, that Diana was pregnant. Diana's body was examined by the coroner and found not to be pregnant. Her body was embalmed. Um, and like, as you do when somebody dies, like remove certain organs and things like Whoa. that. And her reproduction productive organs were removed and he said that this happened so that they couldn't redo the pregnancy test but people have said like that isn't like you can tell if a body yeah. is pregnant in several ways uh and she wasn't pregnant yeah okay also diana's friends confirmed that she was taking birth control and like menstruating regularly as much as a friend can confirm that you know what yeah. I mean? being like somebody was like is blair pregnant and be like i don't think so i don't think so she had her period she'd probably tell me <laughs> feels like she would tell me yeah um and also that she wasn't getting engaged like she didn't mm-hmm. tell them that she was getting engaged she had called some person in the press to ask what was going to be in the papers on sunday kind of being like, like she wasn't like being like and guess what i'm getting married like well, i can't imagine living your life like even i had a bunch of things pop up randomly under my name in like a google recently oh no and it like it was n- nothing bad it oh, was okay. just because the tubi movie i did came out hell yes and i was like truly like for a couple of days i was like i'm checking this to make sure no one said anything rancid about me i know but you're diana and everyone's just like saying it's crazy that's the thing like i can't imagine being someone who actually just like people are reporting wild shit on you all the time yes and Horrifying. a lot of people said that that uh because one of diana's rings was missing halfway through like from photos halfway through the trip and dody went to a jeweler that he was like getting a wedding ring again just like no proof about this but i i like i want to say like there is no empirical proof but the other end of this is that i just find it to be really horrifying the prospect of your son being killed and you know all these things are true and then somehow because it's the royal family they go back and like cover their tracks yes insane yeah um horrifying okay some people also allege that the blood samples of Henry Paul were tampered with and that he wasn't drunk because oh. there's a theory that um, to assassinate Diana, they stro- they put a strobe light, like they used a strobe light in the tunnel to blind Paul so that oh. he would like whatever. Jesus. Yeah, we'll get more into that a little bit later. But pe- So people say like, and this was again pushed forward by Al Fayed, that mm-hmm. he wasn't drunk, that they like either like switched bodies and it was like a different drunk person or he was oh. drugged or whatever again it's the same thing with conspiracy theories where like there's a one thing where they're like he wasn't actually drunk and guess what a drunk man mysteriously died in a fire that night and i'm like i don't like, okay. really understand how those are related well here's what i think you know what i mean like we go into these conspiracy theories about it and how they did all this direct action but like whether it was direct or not the royal family for sure played a part in diana's death you know what i yes. mean yeah either they, they didn't have to kill her to kill her Yes, 100%. Like, they could have done so much more to protect her, to back off, to, like, make her life. Well, why are they driving around with fucking Dodie's chauffeur? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No. Why does she have one bodyguard? Yeah, exactly. There's lots of things going on there that don't really make any fucking sense. Yeah. Um, Again, I don't think that he was strobed to death, and I don't think that they either switched the body. He was dead before the crash. No, that's confusing. Or anything. Like, I don't... I think more realistically, all of the fucking witnesses of him being drunk as fuck in France and him being, like, an alcoholic seem way more correct. Um, Especially he was mixing it with pills. Like, when you get drunk on antidepressants, you feel fucking crazy. (laughs) Um, there were high levels of carbon monoxide in his blood, which people were like, oh, it's been tampered with. And it's because either when you die, your blood just gets fucking weird. And he was dead yeah. on the scene. Or um, when you hit the airbags, you inhale a lot of carbon monoxide because there was carbon monoxide in the airbags, which they should change, by the way, if that's what's That's true. interesting. Carbon monoxide airbags? That's insane. Um, and yeah, I have here a different drunk man died in a house fire that night. I don't understand. People were saying this in the Reddit and I was like, 
Yeah, but does that mean that he was the drunk driver and he hit them and they killed him? But then why would they do that? Was he actually behind? The, was that fight? It doesn't. I don't understand that. Yeah, I'm being honest. They saying that they put him in, like they got him drunk, then killed him in a house fire, and then replaced him as driver. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I guess. But a I'm like, body I'm gonna swap. Yeah, I'm gonna need a bit more. It's like that fucking Sherlock episode where it's a fucking plane full of dead people. Where I'm like, I just don't understand <laughs> why this is a good idea. Yeah, like what happened? I don't understand was, how this is gonna the be the dunk that you think it is. Yeah, exactly. But that's my beef with Sherlock is that they think of good ideas and then they cannot follow through. No, where they're like, guess what? It's a dream. <laughs> you're like, what? Why? Why would it be why a dream? Why is it a dream? This is Sherlock Holmes. I hate the dream shit oh. so much. I hate the dream that shit. That last season of Sherlock is maybe the worst season of TV I've ever seen. In my <gasps> Are you in House of the Dragon season two yet? I'm not. You can't oh, talk to me about okay, it. Okay, I won't. I won't talk to you about it. One of the French journalists died shortly after he shot himself in his car, and the gun was a quarter mile away, and the car was set on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I think I just copy and pasted this. I haven't read this all the way through. The keys were also outside the locked car and it was ruled as a suicide. So he was murdered for some reason. Maybe he knew too much. Okay. Sure. Yeah. That was a crazy sentence to read for the first time out loud. <laughs> so one of the journalists of died away. afterwards. He was one of the journalists on the scene. He shot himself in his car, but the gun was a quarter mile away and the car was set on fire and the keys were outside the car. So it's just kind okay. of fishy, but I don't know. That's fishy. There's a lot of details in that. Yeah. Um, the vehicle that they were in was stolen and found undamaged just days before. So it's been theorized, theorized that w- the vehicle was tampered with. Oh, no. Um, like it was hacked by like intelligence or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like that they like, oh, my God, they fucked with the brakes or whatever kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, Real. And it wasn't the vehicle that they were expecting to use, but it was swapped that night. So just oh. kind of weird. That's so interesting. There's a lot yes. about cars. There's a lot about cars, and I don't really care that much about it. <laughs> um, people say that the car it clipped was a white Fiat that hasn't been identified. Like, oh. they haven't found what the white Fiat, like, who owns the white Fiat, what's going on there. Well, because anyone who owns a white Fiat would be too embarrassed to show their damn face in public, <laughs> let me tell you. Stupid car. <laughs> the dumb car. <laughs> That's why they're upset. I know Not because exactly. they killed Princess Diana. <laughs> no, because they're embarrassed to have a white Fiat. Which, and first fair. of all, why are you getting a white car? Second That's of all, why insane. Are you getting getting a, a white car is crazy. That's rich people I know behavior. exactly one car brand, and it's Fiat, and it's because I hate it. Shut up. That Who's... was a white Fiat getting fucking Yeah, pissed someone just honked. They heard me insulting Fiat's and then the Fiat's were Honk. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you. So yeah, the paint of a white Fiat was found on the car, but it's never been confirmed who was in this car. Mm. Uh, an owner Some loser, of a white, obviously. Yeah, an owner of a white Fiat in France um, was found because like the car was like kind of damaged and interrogated, but he has an alibi that he was sleeping next to his wife in bed at the time, which Lies. feels- No, no that's Fiat driver saying. would have a wife. Well, you don't have to worry about it because he killed himself. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry for calling white Fiat drivers virgins. Well, words have impact, Blair. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's funny to be like, I was, but that I could was be sitting anything. next to my like, wife. I would really hate to uh, to be involved in a crime. And then people are like, well, she killed herself, so she did it. And I was like, babe, no. I was in an uphill battle the whole time. <laughs> This had nothing to do with Princess Di. It, it, it was already bad. Exactly. It was already bad. I had a white Fiat. My wife had to lie about me being in bed with her. <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah. Um, a white Fiat hate podcast, yes. by the way. So let's, we hate white Fiat. We hate white Fiat. So let's get into the whole like M16, oh, like the British military killed Diana. Yes. Bell. Okay. So Richard Tomlinson was a former M16 officer and he alleged under oath or not, or like under like a sworn statement. Okay. So not, I don't think in, trial but he for the, to the police okay that okay. m16 was closely monitoring diana before her death for sure that paul or her bodyguard it switched up whenever he talked about it oh my god was an m16 officer okay um and he saw plans to assassinate the president of serbia by using a strobe light to blind his chauffeur okay so being like okay m16 killed diana interesting which if you are you know an american and don't really know what that is it's like the british cia It's like spy shit. FBI. Yeah. He was already in prison before he said this for leaking plans and just having no security understanding. Hmm. Um, He was also discredited because he was writing a novel about (laughs) being a spy at the time (laughs) and trying to get publicity (laughs) by saying this stuff about Princess Diana to get his novel off the ground, which, babe, finish the novel first. Finish the novel and then get on TikTok and say, have you ever wanted a book where there's a spy? Also- 
I have, I, uh, first of all, have you ever read a book that's a spy? Have you ever read a book that's also a spy book? Think about it. I think about when it. are we getting the spy book renaissance is my fucking question. I because know. Because we need it. Men don't have fun books to read anymore. No. And not to, you know, support, be like, men don't have anything. But like, when I'm at the beach, I'm seeing girls read Colleen Hoover. I'm seeing girls read Emily Henry. I'm seeing girls read all the fun girl books that oh, are yeah. classics. And then men have Jordan Peterson it's make crazy. your bed every morning. It's crazy. And be nice they to cats. They need spy books. They need some marine no, books. They, they need, need sports spy. books. We need a freaking, we need George R. R. Martin to release The Winds of Winter. Honestly. And I've said this for 13 years. Yes. I've said this since yes. I was a child. <laughs> You've been saying I've this been since saying the womb. That George R. R. Martin Your first words. To your release. first words. I, I came out of the womb and I said, George R. R. Martin is going to take forever to come out with <laughs> Book, book five, book five of Song of Ice and Fire. No, but I, I will say this because I just absolutely obliterated the first three books in the Bridgerton series. Yes, and I have so many thoughts. We I can't want to get read into Bene- them. Benedict's one. Oh, I just finished it. It is so good. Because I read Eloise's book, and Eloise's book is very bad. You're not going in order. No, I never go in order. It's You're a whole crazy. thing. I know. I know. In order. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the Bridgerton books, there's no reason yeah. why you should have to read those in order. I got a major spoiler in a book like five in book two. I love it that. It made no sense. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll talk about it later. Also in SAS, which is like the Special Air Force, which is British military sniper, bragged to his friends that the SAS was involved in killing Princess Diana, which seems just like a lie to me. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's the brag that you think it is. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Okay, next conspiracy theory. (laughs) Okay. That Diana faked her own death. Oh, yeah. I've heard this one. Yes. And she's living in BC. Yes, yes, I, I know yes, this one. I know yes. this one. So this is that Princess Diana faked her own death to either escape the royal family because she thought that they were going to kill her or to escape the press and the highly scrutinized life that was having a negative impact on her life. Um, and to do so, she faked her own death and is now living in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Yeah, like on the island, right? Yes, on the island. Mm-hmm. Um, this is because she went to BC a bunch, like three or four times when she was princess. Yeah. Her birthday is Canada Day. <laughs> okay, iconic. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. She it's both. the first of the month. Exactly. She took William and, Char- uh, not Charles, she took William and Harry to BC shortly before her death. Mm-hmm. Um, she also said that she wanted to move out of the country and she loved Canada. Mm-hmm. And also Thank her you, brother Diana. bought a house in BC. Okay. And if you recall, Harry and Meghan moved to BC. They moved to BC. So mm-hmm. this is the whole like, wake up, the connections. The and connections. All, and we've also just had a lot of Diana sightings. Yes. There is a very, this is from a TikTok that I saw. So grain, the grain, <laughs> biggest grain of salt you can imagine. Two by four grain of salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, two by four. <laughs> that it was like a very rich person kind of country club hotel. And this user saw a woman who really looked like Princess Diana with a group of very rich British people. And, and she was like, you look like so, you look so much like Princess Diana. And she was like, I've heard that a lot. <gasps> and then Whoa. her boss was like that looks so much like princess diana so she's just been spotted there yeah okay yeah i think that's literally everything oh also just i read prince harry's book obviously and um he says in the book that him when he was an adult looked into diana's death to see if she was alive or not and charles did at the time as well they both yeah. didn't believe that she was really dead but that's like if i was a rich person i too would be like there's no way my grandma died of cancer yeah look into it Look into it. She, she was Look murdered by it. M16. <laughs> M16, they murdered her. They've murdered my grandma. Fix her. Fix. Fix it. Fix it. Okay, the final conspiracy theory. And this is the one I've been waiting for. This is one that you knew, but I didn't know. And somebody DM'd me about this. And thank you if you DM'd me about this because you have now shifted. You've done a choose your own adventure and you've shifted the mm-hmm. story forever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that is that <laughs> Jungkook from BTS, from BTS is Princess Diana reincarnated. And I believe it. I love this. It makes no sense. <laughs> it makes so much sense. No, what are you talking about? No. And yes, here's what does. I will say. I have very pointedly in my online career never said a single bad thing about the army. And I think that's why I've been able to find the success and peace that I have. <laughs> because I know to respect the, BTS the army, army. I mm-hmm. respect the BTS army with my life. Like I would never cross them. Yeah. No. So or you'll die. <laughs> Jungkook was born the day after Princess Diana died, which yes. is cool. I've often looked up that who died cool. on July twenty first, nineteen ninety nine, because Let's I want to try know and figure it out. Who am I reincarnated as? Yeah. Although we talked about this when you came here, where a woman online was like, "My past life was, was Cleopatra. Cleopatra," and it's like realistically, my past life was like a conductor. Mm-hmm. I went to a uh, queer line dancing again this weekend and found out that a lot of because I'm not on the queer dating apps, obviously, because I'm coupled up. That a lot of there's a lot of lesbian train conductors. Really? Yeah. Somebody there was like, I've matched with like three fucking conductors this week. 
train conductor? I have a match with a single train well, conductor. Well, then you've got to you got to start swiping, okay, girl. I don't know. You got to swipe. I'm doing. I got to go back. I got to start from square one. I know. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> I'm doing it wrong. I haven't yes. found a single train conductor. So, I went on a Twitter thread to find all the reasons. Okay. I'm just going to read them in succession. How's yes. that? Yeah. I'm a- so, both of them are charming and can play to the camera. Yes, and they have the same smile. They do have the same smile and they both do the thing where they kind of put their eyes down and yeah. look up through their hair and they're very shy. They're but shy. like smiley. Okay, they have similar scars on their faces, on their yes. cheeks. Mm-hmm. They both love song and dance. Yes, and Diana said that she would have wanted to be a dancer. <laughs> yes. If she had another okay. life. She said, she said okay. she, I would want to be a dancer. Okay. 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 So this. I feel like I've looked into this. So you being condescending <laughs> when I actually know about the junk of Diana theory, please. <laughs> yeah, so Diana said she would dance to Uptown Girl by Billy Joel bop that she was she could be like a dancer and a performer in another life and jungkook of course is a dancer and a performer in this life isn't that Mm -hmm. beautiful and he's also a people's princess he is a people's princess and they both Mm -hmm. do have that kind of sly charm i do see when you look at them you're like he kind of does have princess diana vibes he does um and yeah both are introverted so those are the reasons and i love that there is more, I feel like. That's what I found on the Twitter thread. What okay. else? You fucking no, that's tell good. me then. I don't know. I might threw my phone on the other side of the couch. <laughs> well. So I can't Google. Yeah, that's the Princess Diana. I believe in theory. Jungkook is Princess Diana. But you know, okay, here's my thoughts on all the theories. Do you want my thoughts on all yes, the theories? Yes, give me. Yes, Here are my no. th- thoughts on all the theories. I think that if she's re- is, if she is dead and reincarnated, I would love her to be reincarnated as someone like Jungkook. She deserves it. And I think she has star power. Whereas we were saying, like, realistically, you're probably like the reincarnation of a farmer. But yeah. we're regular people. She does not have regular, like, she does not have regular vibes. Like, she would be Jungkook. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if she, like, if it's really her soul's journey and this was, like, a lesson of her soul that this was not the way for her to get the, like, fame that she was meant for in her soul, now she's able to get it. By the famously accepting a non-toxic Korean pop music scene. Korean pop music scene. Yeah, no. Nothing but love and light. No problem. Nothing but love and light there. For sure, we're counting down till the expose. Yes. But, um, you know what? I, I love to believe that. Also, I think the one of her faking her death and living in Canada is the nicest. I know. I think that one... I don't think that's true no i don't think it's true but either. i want it to be true so bad i feel like it's one of those things that like i think a lot about like revisionist history and things like hamilton and things yeah you know where we are retellings of history that maybe have these twists that make it like a bit better and i do think that sometimes it's like the narrative that we tell ourselves is often very meaningful maybe not as meaningful as the truth it's the same thing as ghosts or whatever right yeah, like a exactly. lot of times it means that like the things that we want to believe say more than the truth at times this is the thing so it's like if we want to believe that someone can escape their life and live in peace it's beautiful it's important for us to have that belief that's beautiful and as much as i don't believe that that actually happened it is very nice to think like oh if she wanted to she She could she could and you think that the queen did murder diana well i I don't (laughs) know if i think that the queen directly murdered Diana. but she but the but the the queen could murder diana even if she didn't murder diana i would be more want to believe any of those conspiracy theories than anything else because i just don't think that the royal family would have stopped it Yes, I agree. And that, I think, is more... Negligent. Negligent. Yes. Is almost more impactful in her death than if they actually were to go after her and kill her in a car and replace her driver. It's the negligence of being like, you you treated this person badly. You did not want her in the family. You know what I mean? You forced it. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you did not protect it. her. Yeah. Okay. And I think we're seeing it in the way that Kate and Megan oh, are playing out. Awful, awful. Let's, Let's make, make this tragedy about, about us. us. So we're going to go into the segment because we kind of forgot to do it for the last two episodes. Yes. Rapid fire. Yes. Give me off the top of your head. Okay. Make up a Princess Diana conspiracy theory now. Go. Okay. Princess Diana conspiracy theory. It's that she and Camilla Parker Bowles were sisters. Oh, I love this. Yeah. And they were doing like swapping all the time. Oh, I love this. And they just, they just like would swap whatever. And they were just playing a game and then like. 40 years from now when they're on their deathbeds. I love that. Diana's still alive in this okay. scenario. And my conspiracy theory is that Malia Obama is Princess Diana's... Reincarnate? Or love daughter. child. Love child? <laughs> of Dodi Fayed? No. Well, that doesn't really make any sense, but sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why not? Okay, and that's part three. Yeah. Four. Part three, four, four five. Ish. Honestly, I've lost count. Yeah, of our Princess Diana series. Yes, and it's the final one, yes. Yeah. We're still going to Unless do... we want to do another one, but yeah, probably exactly. not. Yeah, then we're going to... But that's the end of our Diana series. We'll do another one yeah. later. 
So thank you guys so much for listening. Yes. We'll be back next week with some beautiful new topics. New topics. And Uh, get ready because this one's going to be huge if we're doing what we think we're doing. It's going to be a hard day's night. It's going to be a hard day's night. And we've been working like a dog. We've been working like a dog. And we're day tripping all over to the next series that we're doing. In our octopus's garden. (laughs) And yes, it's the Rolling Stones. (laughs) So get ready. You heard it. It's the Ramones. It's the Ramones. We're doing the New York scene, proto-punk scene. Actually, yeah. 1969 to 1980 um, that everyone's interested in and not just me. Yeah. So uh, thank you. So as always, please, uh, if you want to check us out on Patreon, on YouTube, on other things. Please but, do that. But we love you so much. We thank you, you so for much. listening. Thank you for listening. This is the best thing you can do to support the pod. Yeah. And we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. This podcast has been brought to you by the Sonar Network. Sonar!